Today we're going to use this graphic organizer to review how to solve a system of equations using each of these three methods. The graphing method, the substitution method, and the elimination method. So let's start with the graphing method. Now we know that a solution to a system of equations is the point at which they intersect. So I need to graph these two lines and see, find that point of intersection. So the first thing I'm going to do is solve for y in both equations. I'm going to put this in slope intercept form, which looks like this. y equals mx plus b. The number in front of the x is my slope. The b value is my y intercept or my beginning point. I plot that first. So this one's in slope intercept form, but the second equation is not. I do this by solving for y. So I need to add three to both sides. So that second equation should look like this negative one third x plus three. So now let's graph each equation. I'm gonna graph the first one in purple, y equals two x minus four. So the first thing I'm gonna do is on my y axis, I go down to negative four. That's my y intercept. And then my slope is positive two over one. So from that point, I'm gonna rise two and run one to the right. And when I'm solving a system of equations by graphing, by hand, I put as many points on this line as possible because typically when you're asked to do this, one of those points is your point of intersection. And now I'm gonna graph that line. Then I'm gonna change colors here. And now let's graph the second line. So this positive three, that's my Y intercept. I'm gonna go up three on my Y axis. And then in this case, my slope is negative. So I know it's going to fall from left to right. It's gonna be like that. And I'm going to be rising one and running three. So I can go down one and run three this way. Oh, looky there. One, two, three. I've already found my point of intersection. I'm not even going to graph any more points. Oh my gosh, we're going to erase that and do that again. I'm just going to draw that line. And then this point right here is my point of intersection. What is that ordered pair? Positive three, positive two, and I'm gonna write that as my solution, three, two. Now keep in mind that if you have lines that are parallel and they never intersect, what's your answer? It's no solution, it would look like this. No solution, there's no point of intersection, there's no solution. Or you could have a problem where when you're graphing the lines, you're graphing the same line. So what is the point that they share? They share all points if you're graphing the same line or coinciding line, so your answer would be infinitely many solutions. So now let's go over to substitution. Solve the system of equations using the substitution method. So when I'm using the substitution method, the first thing I need to do is solve for one variable. And this is a really good example because I have an equation where a variable is already solved for. x equals 2y plus 4. If x, e I'm sorry, not 2y, if x equals y plus 4, anywhere I see x, I can replace it with y plus 4. So in that second equation, instead of 2 times x, I'm going to replace that x with parentheses. And then I'm going to plug in what x equals, which is y plus 4. Plus 3y equals negative 7. And then I write the rest of that equation out, that second equation. So what I've created is one equation with one variable. I'm only dealing with the y variable, and now I just solve this like a regular equation. So I'm gonna distribute this to 2y plus eight plus three y equals negative seven. And now I'm going to combine like terms, two y and three y is five y. And now I'm just solving a basic two-step equation. So I'm gonna subtract eight from both sides 5y equals negative 15, divide by 5, and I get y equals negative 3. Now, you're not done when, you, when you're to this step in solving a system of equations using substitution. If y equals negative 3, I can, anywhere I see y, I can replace it with negative 3 and solve for x. I could put it here in this equation, or I could put it here in this equation. Which equation would you like to plug it into? I'm going to use this first equation. If x equals y plus 4, I'm looking for the x value when y is negative 3. Negative 3 plus 4 is 1. 
So now let's write our solution as an ordered pair. It's 1, negative 3. Let's go on to the last example, solving by elimination. When we use the elimination method, I really like to have both of my equations in standard form, meaning ax plus by equals c. And you don't need it in standard form. It's just a form that makes it really easy. And what you're looking for is when you add these two equations, you you have the same but opposite coefficients for one of the variables. So that means that if I look at this, the x variable, do I have the same but opposite? No. If I look at this y variable, do I have the same but opposite? No. What you can do is multiply one or both equations by a constant to create those same but opposite coefficients. So when I look at 3 and 4, 3 doesn't go into 4, meaning 4 is not a multiple of 3, but I can put a 1 in front of that y. 1 goes into 3. How many times? 3 times. 1 times 3 is 3. So I can multiply the second equation times 3. But if I want the same but opposite coefficients, would I multiply it by 3 or negative 3? Negative 3. So now we're going to multiply it all the way across. What I'm going to do is rewrite that first equation, and then I'm going to rewrite the second equation, multiplying a negative 3 into every term. So I get negative 9x minus 3y equals positive 33. And now I'm at a point where I can add my two equations. So I'm going to add my variables, 4x minus 9x is negative 5x. My y variable cancels because 3y minus 3y is 0. And then negative 23 plus 33 is 10. When we divide both sides by negative 5, we get negative 2. So now we're back to kind of where we were over here in the substitution method. We're going to now substitute this value anywhere we see an x variable. I can plug it into any one of these equations, and just for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to plug it into this first equation. So instead of 4 times x, I'm going to plug in negative 2 for x. 4 times negative 2 plus 3y equals negative 23. And I'm just going to solve this basic equation. Negative 8 plus 3y equals negative 23. When I add 8 to both sides, I get negative 15. And then when I divide both sides by 3, I get y equals negative 5. So now let's write this as an ordered pair. x comma y, negative 2, negative 5. That is my solution. And now let's go to your uh, special systems of equations graphic organizer. So I mentioned earlier those special situations where you might have no solution or infinitely many solutions as your answer. And here are some examples that show that. So let's look at a problem that would have no solution. And I just want to remind you that parallel lines never intersect. Therefore, there is no solution for a set of parallel lines. I also want to rem remind you that parallel lines have the same slope. So we're actually going to solve this by graphing. There are a number of methods that you could use. You could use the substitution or elimination method, but I'm just going to show you using the graphing method. So the first thing I want to do is make sure both of my equations are in slope-intercept form. So this one is, but the second one is not. I'm going to move this x term over to the right, and I get negative 2y equals negative 6x plus 2. And then I'm going to divide everything by negative 2. Every term gets divided by negative 2. Negative 6 divided by negative 2 is positive 3. So there's 3x. 2 divided by negative 2 is negative 1. So there's my other equation. So you might be able to see that 3x plus 7 is obviously parallel to 3x y equals 3x minus 1 because they have the same slope. But let's go ahead and graph it. So this first equation I'm going to graph in blue, and I'm going to 
graph my y-intercept at positive 7. And then my slope is positive 3 over 1, if you want to write it like that. 3 over 1. So I'm going to rise 3 and run, run 1. And likewise, I can go down 3 and run 1 this way if I want. Okay, and I can do as many points as I want. And now I'm going to graph the second one in green. y equals 3x minus 1. The first thing I'm going to do is graph my y-intercept at negative 1. And then my slope is rise 3 and run 1. And because that constant rate of change is the same for both of these equations, they'll never, ever, ever intersect. They're parallel, which means your answer is no solution. Let's look at the example involving infinitely many solutions. And actually, let me go back to this no solution. If you're ever solving an equation, some equation, and you get rid of your variable and you end with a statement that looks like this, 0 equals 4, which I'm just giving an example. Does 0 equal 4? No, that is not a true statement. When you get an answer like that, your answer is no solution. Okay, so that's if you were to solve it algebraically using the substitution or elimination methods. So let's go over to this one involving infinitely many solutions. So I want to remind you that coinciding lines, meaning the same line, share all points. Every point is the same on the line. Therefore, there are infinitely many solutions for lines that are the same. So again, I need to convert them to y equals mx plus b, or slope-intercept form. The first one is, the second one is not. So let's solve for y by subtracting 1x, negative 1x plus 10. Now what do I do? Divide every term by negative 2, and I get y equals negative 1 divided by negative 2 is positive 1 over 2. 10 divided by negative 2 is negative 5. So now I have two equations, and as you can see, y equals 1 half x minus 5 is the same as what I have up here, y equals 1 half x minus 5. So when I graph these equations, I'm going to graph 1, 2, 3, 4, down 5. My slope is rise 1, run 2. Rise 1, run 2. This is good graphing practice. I can also go down 1, 2 this way. All these points will fall on that line. Okay. So that is that line. If I graph the other one, it's exactly the same. It's exactly the same line. There are infinitely many points um, in this system of equations. Okay. Infinitely many solutions. So when you're solving an example like this, a problem like this algebraically, and you get rid of your variables, so they get eliminated somehow, and let's say you end up with a statement that looks like this, 3 equals 3. Does 3 equal 3? Yes, it does. In that case, there are infinitely many solutions. It's a true statement, so your answer is infinitely many solutions. I hope these graphic organizers will help you on your assignment for today. Good luck!